Hey everyone, Dylan here. So don't expect this to always be uh, as fast and as short and also uh, uploaded as soon as this one will be. However, tonight was a very special occasion. I actually made time out of my day for the August 2nd, 2021 edition of Monday Night Raw because... You know, last week's Raw wasn't that bad, and the SmackDowns were alright, so I figured, oh, hey, why not? Let's turn in live for once. Maybe it'll actually be good. <sighs> I had to open my mouth. Maybe it's just me, but I really feel like they gave us a shit show. Just, I feel like it's something that would have been, like, pre-pandemic WWE at its finest. Like, they barely tried tonight. Anyway, let's get into it. Why don't we? Um, it's going to be an interesting one because this is... I, I guess this makes sense, right? Like, even though neither one of these people were really booked at all at the time being, I mean, it kind of makes sense why they're frantic, you know? They're trying to recover from the bad media of either giving him or uh, releasing Bray Wyatt um, and uh, giving Ric Flair his release. So uh, I don't know if it was the same for all of you or not, but this week's intro for me was just audio bites. Like, it was just a blank screen. Anyway, and then we get into the, the welcome of Raw, whatever you want to call it. Um, they were saying, welcome to Monday Night Raw, Corey Graves did. They didn't even mention that they were in Chicago. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> it's like every time that a CM Punk chant starts tonight, they're like, uh, oh, CM who? Let's censor those crowds. But yeah, anyway, the commentary team for tonight is Corey Graves, Byron Saxon, and Jimmy Smith, the normal squad. Alright, anyway, after about 10 minutes, give or take, MVP welcomes Chi-Town, a.k.a. Chicago, Illinois, or as I typed in, Illinois, <laughs> and the Almighty wants to wanted him to address on behalf of the Almighty a few things before Goldberg comes out. First, he didn't agree to the match. Secondly, Goldberg can kill any man, but he didn't challenge a man. The gladiator Goldberg is used to fighting gladiators, not titans like Lashley, and, you know, so on, cue metaphors. Anyways, they buy time for a bit, and then eventually they say something along the lines of, it might be Goldberg's final match in his career, which, please, you're killing the nostalgia run, please. Um, anyways, he comes out, finally, and... Lashley puts on his shades and almost ignores him the whole time while he's talking. Anyway, Goldberg says Lashley should be worried about losing to him. He calls him a coward and gives like the weakest promo. Honestly, I didn't pay attention to like half this show, and this was like one fifth of it. I just tuned out after a while because Goldberg was not making sense during his promo. Uh, I think what I got from it as he fumbled over his words was that he, I don't even know, uh, I guess Lashley should be afraid of him, watch out, ooh. Uh, funniest part is of it all is that commentary said that he didn't mess up a single word. Anyway, then MVP points out Goldberg's son to Lashley, and I thought they were going to do a spot where like Goldberg's son gets hurt, but nah, uh, MVP just goes over to him, trash talks until Goldberg comes back out and spears him. There's the opening segment. Then we go back to Drew McIntyre, and he has his sword talking to an interviewer, and they said on commentary, look at the size of the sword. Anyway, they show a package <laughs> uh, from last week about what happened last week, which, you know, watch the review if you want to know anything that happens last week. I'm not going to mention it. Anyway, the handicap match when we come back from break. Hey, we come back, and Gender Squad's already in the ring. A.K.A. Veer and Shanky. Uh, when Drew comes out and he slowly goes to the ring and then he grabs his sword out of the little styrofoam thing. And it looks like he's going to like actually fight him with it. So, the match goes like a normal match, basically. Uh, yada yada sing sing. He's about to <laughs> sing sing like the Sing Brothers. Uh, anyway, he's about to go for a Claymore until Shanky holds his foot. 
And Jinder comes in with a chair, and the other two get chairs, and it's like a three-on-one chair assault time, until Drew pulls out a sword and literally threatens to kill him until they all run out of the ring. And they should have replayed that. They, like, ham it up for, like, ten minutes, because just like a lot of the things tonight, it was just stalling. Um, but anyway, they go backstage. When they're backstage, Jinder says that it's no longer safe here at Raw, and he runs away. Um, and then they come back from a commercial break, and Drew's walking casually backstage with his sword, and he says he likes the fact that Jinder's thinking about him in his nightmares, and he wants Jinder to be afraid of him, yada, yada, yada. No offense, I really like Drew, I just, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> um, let me see here, what's, what's next on the list? Um, I'm trying not to do any cuts here because this show really wasn't worth editing time. Anyway, then we go back to the ring after like several ad breaks and apparently Nia Jax is going against Rio Ripley and I, I skipped through this match. Not because it was a bad match or anything, it's just so predictable. I just got to the end I was like, alrighty, what's happening? Um, apparently went through an ad break, and Jax lost again rolled up due to Baszler distraction from the outside. They tease a fight afterwards, which Baszler just walks out of the ring, and Rhea does a riptide, and it looks like she hurts her fucking back, because of course she would. Nia Jax is several hundred pounds heavier than you. I mean, that's rhetorical. You're gonna strain your back. But, whatever. Anyway, it was a cool moment. Um, they show a flashback of what happened last week with Mustafa, and uh, I, I accidentally typed freaking Musor, M-O-S-O-R-S, -S, on accident, but Mansor is what I typed. I think that was autocorrect. <laughs> uh, anyway, we get this basically the same match except the opposite spectrum, because uh, when we come back from this ad, T-Bar... And Mace end up killing him, basically. And Tabar, Tabar looks like he's just not in the mood to be there. He gets spiked on his head off a DDD, DDT spot. But they end up winning against Mansoor because Mustafa was going for a move. Um, but Mansoor got shoved into him. He was like a uh, off the top turnbuckle move. Uh, but he got shoved into him, so he got crotched, fell out of the ring as... Mansoor gets killed in the ring. Then, after the pinfall, Mustafa comes in and gets his ass whooped by the team coming back. And then we go to the ads. Then we come back, and Charlotte comes out for a promo, and they advertise her and Nikki in a no holds bar match, apparently. Um, they call it a championship qualifier or can. Whatever their new term for contender is. Uh, but later on, the ref holds up the belt during the match, so he makes it that much more confusing. <laughs> um, as she's talking the whole time, the crowd starts chanting for Becky, which really irritates Charlotte, apparently. Um, and she has to win. She has to tell the crowd like several times to just let, like, let, let her finish her statement before they do anything, which, you know how well that goes over. Anyway, she pulls out a kendo stick under the ring, a broomstick, and a chair. And she says that she's been cashing on three times. And she's going to use those weapons, allegedly, tonight. Except for the chair was pulled out, so that way Nikki Ash could sneak up behind her and hit her with the chair. And that happened. And then, um, I'm seeing if I missed anything. Yeah, we transition as they're staring down back to Eva Marie and Dewdrop talking about how they hurt the t they hurt Natalia last week. I think Dewdrop, yeah, Dewdrop hurt Natalia last week, and Eva Marie's like, "Good, that's what she deserves." Um, and they talked about Lily interrupting them. Then even Dewdrop do a promo making fun of that. Oh wait, sorry. Beforehand, there was a video package talking about that whole match last week, which, by the way, not gonna say. Watch the match. Um, anyway, yada yada, sing sing, they do a thing making fun of all that, um, including Natalia's injury, and they go out with a match of Dewdrop versus Tamina, We come back from the break. Come back and they fight, they show how Dewdrop accidentally injured Natalia's ankle, apparently. Anyways, they have a normal hoss fight until Tamina reverses a ground splash, like, 
the thing where Tamina sat down and Dewdrop would jump, I guess, go off the ropes and splash, splash body across her. But she reversed that into a Samoan drop for the win. And then Alexa Bliss and Lily are on the screen rubbing it in. It's a show replay of Damian Priest versus Sheamus last week. Then Damian's walking backstage and him and Riddle do a little segment. Uh, apparently Riddle has a new scooter and he named his goldfish as a kid, Swim, Swim Shady. <laughs> that popped me. Anyway, he asked if they both check on each other. Like, like Priest is like, hey, aren't you afraid that the same thing will happen to this new scooter? And Riddle's like, nah, I got Randy Orton's DNA in me and I hear voices in my head and all this. I'll be safe. So, anyway, um... Then they transition into Morrison and Miz coming out as they plug Miz TV coming up. And cue an ad. I swear to God, they're really good at these ads. Anyway, they come back and introduce the show. And they ask Priest to come out, which he does. And they show what happened at Mania again. Then they talk about how Priest injured Miz's leg. And how he took advantage of an injured Sheamus last week. Then Priest said that he took the babyface route for this promo, basically. And said that he was like medically cleared, so it was all okay. And then he starts calling Miz's injury like not even legitimate anyway, so why would it matter? And starts starts poking fun at that. And then challenges basically Morrison challenges him after after calling BS on the injury, but he does it in a weird like funny comedic way. Um, anyway, that match happens, and Morrison gets pinned, uh, Sheamus then runs out to attack Priest, which Ricochet comes out and saves him, and you know what that means, uh, after this ad break, we come back, and there's the, the, the hills are reversing the face, and blah blah blah, Priest and Ricochet win somehow, I honestly skim through this. <laughs> we then transition into commentary, talking about Lashley and Goldberg from earlier, and then we see Lashley and MVP backstage, and apparently he'll respond to Goldberg's challenge right after this ad break. I swear to God, if you keep on hitting me with these ad breaks, it's going to get shorter and shorter every week. All right, come back. Lashley gets asked about the events earlier, and then Lashley basically angrily accepts without saying the words, I accept. Um, then they give up the official graphic, and the crowd boosts the shit out of this just because Goldberg's in it. All right, then Riddle comes out during his intro. One of the pyro sparks doesn't go off right. I think that's because, like, Priest accidentally squirted it during the Spring Miz segment because it was in that corner. But anyway, they show the replays of last week uh, as they have him and Amos go against each other um, after Amos gives his one statement interview, which he sounded like a badass, but I didn't write it down, so I forgot it already. Anyway, he comes out and the match ends with him slamming uh, doing the double-handed Luke Gallows sit-down spot, only he doesn't sit down, and he ends up pinning him for the win. Then we transition to Alexa talking to Lily, and Dewdrop flanks her, and Eva Marie's there. Then they make, f then they attack Lily. Oh no! And then ooh, Lily can walk. Ooh, scary. <sighs> Anyways, after that lame shit, <laughs> Karrion Cross is coming out to go against someone, I wonder who, when we come back from the ads. Uh, it's against Keith Lee. Um, they have a match together that goes through a couple ads. And I'll be honest, I skimmed through this because I figured Keith Lee would get his win back, which, by the way, he did. <laughs> we then transition to Rhea talking about the No Holds Barred match and how she ha will have a close eye on it. It's weird, the way she said it, I figured she would interfere later on tonight, which, spoiler alert, she didn't. Anyway, we come back, f and it's a promo from Reggie about why he got rid of his full name and the accent. Uh, and Anyway, his opponent tonight is Tozawa, and he wins. Uh, it's All these matches are entertaining, by the way, and nothing against the performers. It's just the company you work for did not book anything correctly tonight. Performers, awesome job. Proud of all of y'all. Anyway, Nikki Ash gets interviewed about uh, a ma her upcoming match backstage, and after the interview, she like does her entrance. We go to an ad, come back, and here's the match. So I wrote down some highlights of it because it's it's a lot of stuff, and I, I think it goes through either one or two ad breaks. So anyway, Charlotte Spears were through a bar barricade. Um, they fight for a bit. 
uh, puts her through a announce table as Rhea looks on. Then she tries to pin her with one foot, but the champ kicks out. So then Charlotte tried to spear through the table she set up in the corner, but then it backfired for a two count. So Nikki does like a reverse crossroads on the middle rope th gimmick thing. I don't know what to call it for the win, which I mean, uh, all right, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, we get a lot of taunting and a plug for SummerSlam as we fade to black. And that was the worst show I think I've watched yet. To be fair, I've watched like four shows to review technically. But this is making me want to quit the review already, and it's only, like, technically episode 2 of Raw, episode 4 of WWE, and episode 5 of this shit. Ah, uh, I already hate it. I can't, I can't wait till Wednesday night to actually have some good wrestling. Please, please don't let me have just, like, mess the whole thing up. Anyway. Th by the way, I just want to say, this is not a dig at the performers, the wrestlers, the superstars, the sports entertainers, whatever you'd like to label them as. It's not a dig against them. They're amazing artists, and they did the best with their limited time frames, their limited creative, and their limited allowed creativities capabilities. Not because of them, but because of what they're allowed by their employer, which is bullshit. Then again, that's that whole company for you. But yeah, good job at everybody who did anything. At the production standpoint and the creative writing, hell, I'll go after you guys because you you really don't know how to write wrestling. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm a quit before I get someone pissed at me, but you know what? They did their worst tonight. Zero out of 10, except to the performers. I'll give them like 10 out of 10 always because they tried their best and that's all I can ask for the creative though. Zero out of 10. Anyway, bye guys. I love you all. Stay safe. Take care of yourself and I'll see you Thursday. Yeah, I'll see you Thursday or Wednesday if for some reason I can get it done before AEW like this, but I doubt I can. Anyway, bye bye.